So a quick warning about this video, this is about glyphosate and it's about Roundup. And uh, one thing that you'll notice if you talk about Roundup anywhere on the internet is that the bots will come. So I'll monitor the comments below, but if we're starting to see a whole bunch of bots uh, that are just spamming the comments, I might actually turn the comments off. If the comments are off when you're watching this video, it's because we got hammered by glyphosate bots. And it's, it's just what happens. It's what happens on the internet when you talk about Roundup. So without further ado, today's topic is just my personal opinion and thoughts about Roundup and glyphosate and a little bit about GMOs. Stick around. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I wanna to continue my series of answering your questions and we're going to actually use the same question from the last one which asked about toxicity in soils and today we're going to expand on the glyphosate so how much of a concern do i personally think glyphosate is that's roundup okay that this video uh this video could be like four hours long there's so much information out there about glyphosate how bad it is for us um, but also there's a lot of misinformation out there as well and I think it's only prudent that we as permaculturists understand that we are also being inundated about misinformation on the negative aspects of glyphosate as well as um, from, you know, round uh, Monsanto, you know, now Bayer, uh, their misinformation campaign in order to promote glyphosate. As one example, I want to show a piece of research. Uh, that was stated that 80% of U.S. adults have glyphosate in their body. Uh, glyphosate being in our body doesn't necessarily have anything to do with it being toxic to us. Now, it could be, and it, it's very likely looking like it, 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 it is. So don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that it's not. But uh, when headlines like this are put out there, um, and the tool that was used in this headline or in this research, for example, is a mass spectrometer. And mass spectrometers can detect things at ridiculously low levels, like pico levels, like 10 to the 10 to the minus 12 um, levels of uh, concentration in the body. It being in you doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. There's a lot of medical pr practitioners that actually think that your body can handle quite a bit of glyphosate. And... The fact that it's inside of you doesn't necessarily matter. For example, did you know that 80% of humans are walking around with herpes in them right now? Okay. So it doesn't necessarily mean anything um, when it's presented in that way. And this is just one example of what I'm talking about. Um, I'm really not a fan of glyphosate. So let me just put that out there. And I actually think it's one of the worst things that humanity's ever invented. Uh, okay, I want to rephrase that. It's not one of the worst things humanity's ever invented. It's actually important that this exists uh, because I think it's actually really important to be able to kill uh, plants, especially with how global the world is today and how we can get invasive plants spreading all over the place, destroying ecosystems. It is actually really, really helpful that we have a tool that we can use to eradicate kudzu or dog strangling vine or any number of really nasty plants that can spread. Using glyphosate, I don't think, is necessarily, in my opinion, something that should never be done. My contention with glyphosate is how humanity's applying it. And this is going to tie in a little bit with GMOs and how GMOs are applied. GMOs are genetically modified organic material. And, you know, largely GMOs right now are being used to create corn and soybean that's resistant to Roundup so that we can plant that stuff and then spray the entire environment that it's growing in with Roundup, kill absolutely everything in the environment so that only that one plant will survive. This is where I think humanity has just gone completely off the rails. And this is, I think, the worst side of glyphosate and GMOs. And it's largely a problem with the way that humanity is using it. So I don't really think that anyone can possibly defend that killing an entire ecosystem and environment for you know hundreds and thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of acres in an area, growing, killing everything in it, and then growing just one crop, having a giant monoculture, is the best way to treat our planet. I don't think, like, I think kindergarten kids could say that we shouldn't just wipe out entire ecosystems and kill everything in it in order to grow something. 
And I think this is where my biggest problem with glyphosate is, is that it causes so much ecosystem collapse when it's just sprayed on everything to grow monocultures of corn and soy, which is largely what happens. Uh, this is largely what we're doing right now. Let's talk about GMOs. GMOs, if they're used to make a peach tree that is resistant to peach leaf curl, that's a great use of GMOs. If it's, if it's meant to if it's designed to create chestnuts that are resistant to chestnut blight, that's great. We can actually save species that are going um, extinct. However, that's not how it's being used. It's being used to create invulnerable uh, plants that then are growing in an environment of toxin. And that is collapsing in incest, insect populations. You know, we're in the sixth major extinction event right now, and insects are some of the hardest hitting uh, animals uh, that are be experiencing collapse and right now it's actually so bad that we don't even know what we're killing we're actually causing complete collapse and we don't even understand how it's going to play out in fact it's estimated that 25 percent of mammals are going to go extinct in the next uh, 20 to 30 years due to climate change and ecosystem collapse that's just mammals. It's expected that 5% of all living plants are gonna go extinct, uh, flowering plants, 3% of um, non-flowering plants are gonna go extinct. And when you think about like say the monarch butterfly that needs to find milkweed in order to you know, procreate, when a plant goes extinct, it takes along with it a whole bunch of insects. And those insects then take along with them, other insects, and eventually all the way up the food chain, and you have massive disruptions to the environment and the food chain. This is my problem with Roundup. I don't necessarily have a problem with Roundup if someone is spot applying it to get rid of poison ivy, for example, if it's a safety issue. If you're getting rid of something that you're allergic to, if you're getting rid of something um, that can actually displace other things and you're doing it in an intelligent way, it's not the worst thing in the world. Now, back in 1977, there was research that was done that showed that glyphosate uh, doesn't stay resident in the soil very long, and the number that they used was 28 days. Now, there's a bunch of things that are happening, and um, you have to look at what is actually in the environment that's taking glyphosate out of the environment. And it's largely a bacteria called flavobacteria that uh, breaks down the glyphosate but it's been recently discovered that there's more um, fungi and other bacteria that will also do the job. However, there is in the past claims that glyphosate binds itself so well to the soil that it can't get into the watersheds, but then there's a recent study in Scotland and they found that 100% of those were actually contaminated with glyphosate. Now, if that's happening in Scotland, it's happening everywhere else. Um, I'm sure there's studies for your area that show something similar. Glyphosate is getting into our water systems. It's getting into our uh, surface water systems as well. And when farmers don't spot spray, but they spray it all, you know, just across an entire field, when it rains, it can get carried away. Now, the flavobacteria that breaks it down is an anaerobic bacteria. So if you have healthy soils, and you're you know mulching you're doing no-till and you've got a really nice deep loam you've got oxygen penetration deep down into the soils then if you do have roundup contamination it can actually drop the residence time down to in some studies show down to like 18 days so it's not necessarily a huge long-term risk there was a study out there that said you know i think the typical accepted residence time in the soil now is roughly six months, but there was a recent study that showed that it's upwards of a year and a half that they can stay resident in soils. When I was trying to dig into what that meant, they can, um, there was no information. And I think it has to do with, you know, how healthy are the soils, how much of that flavobacteria is there, how much fungus is in the soil, how, what's your water retention capacity of the soil, and what's the temperature that it's happening at and what's the deep oxygen penetration in the soils. If you're largely gonna be going with anaerobic decomposition, that has actually been shown to be quite a bit slower than aerobic decomposition. So if you're ever worried about glyphosate in your soils, a bunch of things that you can do is add a bunch of wood chips, you can add molasses into your soils to promote a healthy bacteria environment, you know, expand those bacteria, they'll break it down faster. Um, you can actually till, and the tilling, bad for your soil microbiology, but 
it does get oxygen down into the soils and it will actually help get the glyphosate out. So maybe you can do a one till and then start transitioning in towards a no till gardening setup. However, um, I don't necessarily think that you have to be that worried about glyphosate in the soil getting into your food, especially if you then stay away from root crops and maybe in that area, even leafy greens, it can get into those a little easier. If you know an area is uh, contaminated with glyphosate, glyphosate, maybe focus more on trees and herbs in that area and maybe, you know, do that whole entire molasses to feed the bacteria. Do that for a season, plant into it next season. The time, even just the six months uh, or a year, will really help drop those levels down and you'll see a lot more success in the next season. But my big contention with glyphosate and GMOs, um, I'm not an anti-GMO guy. I actually think GMO is a fantastic technology. I just think that humanity is using it in the complete wrong way and we're not creating, you know, really stable crops we're not using it to create a diversity of crops as well you know we get one gmo thing and then that's what we plant and we kill all of our diversity not only by actually killing it with glyphosate but then also by just you know not planting as much diversity because we've got these gmo crops that's my problem with gmos and that's my problem with glyphosate it's the ecosystem destruction and disruption that it, it promotes it it's being used right now to prop up and uh, sustain unsustainable farming practices. And I think instead we actually need to be trying to move away from those practices and get into regenerative style growing where we're growing in an ecosystem. We're accepting a little bit of food waste to the insects that might eat some of this stuff. We're not just killing everything. It's not going to create as much profit for the farmers but the way that we're growing food right now is absolutely killing the planet and we're likely at peak food right now. What does peak food mean? It's like peak oil and maybe that is a topic for the next one. So I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you on the next one.